thank you for um, talking with me and with uh, the good folks at YMC. Um, I reached out to our community and we have a couple of questions. Some are from parents, some are from children. Awesome. Um, one specifically from my child. Okay. <laughs> um, so I will let you know about that when we get there <laughs> uh, and why it may or may not sound strange. Um, so I think the first thing that parents want to know is were you ever concerned about bringing like kind of scary, um, deep things that are happening like a child with a disability or um, a parent's death uh, to, to you know, the masses where ever concerned about like how a child might deal with that, especially a death of a parent, but also uh, when it comes to disability, um, how it was just kind of portrayed as the norm. It wasn't pointed out. It was just this is how Hiccup was living. Yep. Yeah, well, it started started with the first movie and, and the loss of Hiccup's leg, and that was an idea that we brought in kind of late in the testing process of the movie. We felt that the ending, the movie took some risks creatively and tonally, yeah. and the ending felt very, I don't know, pat in the way that it all wrapped up. Yeah. <clears throat> so we tested this idea that Hiccup would would not come out of that final conflict unscathed right. and that he would sustain an injury and it said something about his own heroism. Mm -hmm. It said something about the consequence of the world that we were trying to be consistent with. Yeah. But we were a little concerned that it might upset parents or upset kids. Right. So we tested the ending. Okay. And in the focus group at the end of it, w we were surprised to see that several parents kind of put up their hand and said, I would be really disappointed if that wasn't in the final film. Okay. Because I like what it says about you know sacrifice and heroism, yeah. and there was one little boy in particular I'll never forget this. He was mm -hmm. about seven or eight years old, and when asked what he thought, he said, "Well, it was sad because Hiccup lost something, but then he got so much more." Right. Wow. And and yeah. it just reminded me of the capacity of kids to be to process what we think might be tough themes, yeah. uh, but to process them in a really honest way, okay. and and I think that storytelling of this kind you know can tackle some of these more difficult issues mm -hmm. that we all encounter in our lives right <clears throat> and do it with with this kind of safety you know because yeah. it is a story there is a certain make make believe yeah but um you know just to jump to the second movie i remember the film came out on father's day mm -hmm. and i was at a test uh, not a test screening but rather a media screening yeah. and there were some families there and one uh, mother put up her hand and she said why would you release a movie about you know uh, a character losing his father on Father's, Father's Day, Day. Yeah. and I said, "What well, you don't understand is there's nothing gratuitous about this." Yeah. I was 19 when my father died, mm -hmm. and this movie is a celebration mm -hmm. of the sacrifice that the, and, and the heroism of parents. Right. And yeah. so no part of it was put in just because or hey, sure. this is going to shock the audience. Yeah. It's a it's a teaching milestone for Hiccup. Right. And he goes on to become the hero he is in large part because of the influence that his father had and the gap that he leaves when he's gone. Right. So it's these, I think these are ideas that, that kids can handle in step with our characters as long as we treat them with honesty and, and we do it with sincerity. Right. So I'm now going to go into the third, obviously, movie, Why We're Here. And I don't know if this is something that was thought of or done purposely or not, um, but Toothless's partner is his opposite in color. And so this kind of rings true specifically for me because I'm in an interracial marriage, um, but I'm sure other, you know, other families out there, but my children were like, wow, you know, Toothless is black and the mom ends up being white. And so my son's specific question was, why are the babies not gray? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny, the, the babies that we call night lights yeah. because they're part night fury and yeah. light fury. Yeah. Um, are a mix of their traits. Right. Toothless is the last of his kind. Right. Uh, the Light Fury, there are others of, of her, her subspecies in the yeah. hidden world, but their babies have part Light Fury, part Night Fury traits. If you look at them carefully, they're, they're plates, yeah. they're spines. Yeah. Um, and so we just didn't want to make little dairy cows out For of them, sure. but yeah. we did want them to be a mix of black and white yeah. um, so that that goes on to be the, you know, the sort of the continuation of their species. Yeah, yeah, that was, I mean, <laughs> that question came from a seven-year-old, so there you go. Um, and my last kind of question is straight for you. Um, 10 years of your life. Yeah. 12, um, actually. 12 total, so three movies and, you know, the next series. A bunch of series. TV shows, yeah. yeah. Um, if, like, in your dream, you know, if in your best-case scenario, um, what is the future for 
toothless and hiccup? Personally. Personally. Um, that this story uh, ends where it ends and yeah. that it um, we leave behind pretty special, important body of work. Like you said, three films and yeah. seven seasons of a TV show. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, and not a, not a skippable, fast forwardable moment in any of them. And I, you know, you'd always rather be the Smiths than the Rolling Stones, I think. So I, I, I think we, we, we left something really special behind. So best case scenario, um, the uh, time only increases their importance, and uh, the generations to come fall in love with them, um, you know, and that they're just every bit as impactful, if not more so.